Egotastic Fun Time. Hey gang, I'm JP and welcome back to Egotastic Fun Time. I just watched the, what I learned is the penultimate episode of The Mandalorian. Penultimate, as you guys told me, because I didn't know because I'm dumb. It's the thing right before the ultimate thing. It's the penultimate thing. But I say penultimate sounds cooler. This episode, The Reckoning of The Mandalorian, is pretty damn penultimate. Incredibly exciting. Uh, tons of world building, galaxy building, which is what we really, really, really want with a without a bunch of drama from Kylo and Rey and the Darths and all that stuff. This this episode is directed by Deborah Chow, who is going to be the full series director for the upcoming Obi-Wan Kenobi series. Hopefully they don't call it Obi-Wan Kenobi. We're back at the city of Dave Navarro, where the Imperials have taken over, the client has taken over, and Grief Karga contacts the Mandalorian with a deal, with a proposition. Return to Navarro. Bring the child as bait. I will arrange an exchange and provide loyal guild members as protection. This episode is back on track with uh, the story of baby Yoda. He is the focus once again. We're not just running and, and coming across some people that need help. Uh, every episode of uh, most episodes of this season had just been kind of standalone. The Mandalorian just gets into a new situation every episode. And finally, we are back on track with where we left off in the sin, which I think was episode three. In The Reckoning, the Mandalorian gets the band back together, which is something I predicted was going to happen the entire time. Uh, he gets, first he starts off on uh, Sorgan, he stops off and gets Cara Dune. <laughs> the Mandalorian uh, comes to get her and say, hey, come do this job with me, I need you as backup. Uh, she's like, hell to the no, and he's like, uh, it's a uh, Imperial dude that's taking over the town, I'm fighting the Empire, and she's like, oh, well then let's do it. Uh, she apparently really hates the Empire, and she would love to get back into kicking some imp ass. <laughs> Baby Yoda takes this opportunity while they're busy to start messing with the controls and he's, you know, he's got the ship going crazy. He's messing with the joystick. I don't know if this situation was because he's just being a baby. He's a baby Yoda, you guys. He's a Boda. Or if maybe he heard what they were talking about and is like, I don't want to go into danger. This is going to maybe get uh, the Mandalorian killed. Um, I'm going to mess with the controls and try to take us somewhere else. <laughs> Next stop is to pick up Quill, uh, played by Nick Nolte, so I guess he can watch the Baby Yoda for them. I have no idea, but he is now part of the team. What's a visit to Quill without getting an awesome montage, you guys? He's back. Like I've said, he's a droid. He could be repaired. He could be restored. We could get IG-11 back. Well, Quill has done that, and now... <laughs> This hardcore bounty droid, this hunter, is now a service droid, which is very unbecoming. The show has done an amazing job with his movements, uh, even though now he's doing service stuff instead of pew-pew stuff. Is it still a hunter? No, but it will protect. I predicted this from the beginning. Actually, I predicted this uh, since before the series even started, just from the posters. Uh, it felt to me like... Uh, IG-11 was going to end up being Manny's Chewbacca, his Wookiee, his sidekick. Um, I hope that will end up being the case in season two. I've worked in the gene farms. This one looks evolved, too ugly. There's a couple other things we picked up from uh, Kuwil's dialogue. He was a slave, an indentured servant. We kind of knew that before. Uh, he was very much into, you know, he earned his his freedom, so he, he didn't even want to take on this job. Uh, he's not into servitude anymore, but he did agree to come along to help protect the baby. He worked for the other side, he tells Kara. He was part of the Empire. He worked three human lifetimes at a gene farm, so he's kind of a specialist in genetics uh, in clones and things like that. And he said that baby Yoda doesn't look like a clone to him. I guess he would know. So it seems that this episode is saying that Baby Yoda is not 
a clone. So I'm guessing that they want to harvest uh, Baby Yoda's abilities or, or clone his abilities. You know, he'll be the starter kit. He's the base kit and they want to make a bunch more Baby Yodas or at least uh, find a way of, of harnessing what he has inside him, replicate his midichlorians. I'm so glad they haven't used that word. Uh, he finally got to use his ability that he's been trying to use the entire season, uh, his force healing power. That's right, Baby Yoda, besides being able to force choke. No, 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 stop. Which it turns out Kara is not into. <laughs> we're friends, we're friends. Kara is my friend. That is not okay. He can do like a force push type of thing. He also has force healing. And he's a baby, you guys. No one's taught him this stuff. This episode has proven that Baby Yoda is, in fact, a Mary Sue. The Baby Yoda awakens. Does the Razor Crest have enough room inside it to store that many blurgs? That, we see one in the background, but damn! I hope the Mandalorian has a pooper scooper as part of his toolkit. What a precious little creature. I can see why you didn't want to harm a hair on its wrinkled little head. So the team meets up with Grieve Karga, who we're still not sure we can trust. Uh, we meet up with him out in a remote location in the lava fields, and they camp out. <sighs> Where the hell these dragons come from? I have no idea what these dragons are. I don't know if they're new to the Star Wars universe. You guys can tell me if you've seen these dragons before. Are they a callback to something or are they something new? Cara Dune is a horrible shot. Maybe she should have been working for the Empire and been a stormtrooper. The Grief is mortally wounded by one of the dragons. He's got this uh, poison that's, that's, you know, going into his arm and I'm sure it's gonna take him over and he's gonna die. <laughs> He's trying to eat me. We get to see Baby Yoda bring out that force healing ability. I'm going to be going to see The Rise of Skywalker uh, tonight in just a couple hours from now. And I don't know if this force healing is going to be showing up in that movie. I don't know if, if they're working together in that way. We're going to need some force healing in order to uh, repair the Emperor which I know he's returning in the new Skywalker film, according to the trailers. Are they needing Baby Yoda to help Snoke in some way? Snoke was pretty jacked up looking when we met him. Grief has been healed. So the next day, as they're approaching uh, the, the town of Dave Navarro, uh, he has a, a change of heart. It turns out he was going to double cross the Mandalorian, kill the Mandalorian, and take the baby, turn him in, uh, get the reward, but also that will also get the Empire off his back because they have what they're there for. Tell him you captured me. Get me close to him and I'll kill him. That's a good idea. So that's when everything shifts. He reveals that uh, he's had a change of heart after what happened, after being healed by Baby Yoda. He's now on our team. Uh, he has a life debt now, basically, to Baby Yoda. So the plan changes. Uh, they now split off. What exquisite craftsmanship. When they finally get there, I have no idea when he's just like, you know, a scrotum away from the client that he didn't take him out right then and there. I mean, he was face to face. He could have just... Why did Mandalore resist our expansion? The Empire improves every system it touches. He says, look out there. Are things better now since the revolution, since uh, the Republic took over? Everything is worse off than it was before. There's no order. There's no, uh, everything's just mayhem. There's no prosperity. It kind of shows how the empire was able to rebuild, uh, come back as the first order and take everything over again. If the rebellion, uh, the new Republic has no idea how to run a galaxy. It's kind of a, an interesting parallel, I guess, to today's society. <laughs> Moff Gideon's team shoots up the entire uh, room. Uh, then we see some death troopers there, a bunch of stormtroopers. It was so cool to see a TIE fighter land, its wings fold down. Moff Gideon's here, give it up for Moff Gideon, motherfuckers. If he was flying in the TIE fighter when he was having that conversation as a hologram, why is he standing up as a hologram? Hmm, that's kind of weird. You have something I want. 
Who's this guy? You may think you have some idea of what you are in possession of. The Moff Gideon is saying, hey, you got what I want. Uh, and whatever you think is going on, you have no idea. That little baby Yoda bastard that you got is more important to me than you will ever know. Is it because it's personally important for him to get his hands on, the, on, on baby Yoda? Or does his boss need to get their hands on baby Yoda? I'm guessing that baby Yoda as far as they're concerned, is the the linchpin to getting the galaxy back, getting the Empire back. Baby Yoda is a baby. He's 51 years old, but he's a child. He is at the correct age to start training in the way of the Force uh, as a Jedi or a Sith. So if they're able to get their hands on him, uh, I'm sure there's a Sith involved somewhere uh, in the shadows. Uh, baby Yoda can be trained, or maybe they want to... I don't know, upload the consciousness of the Emperor into Baby Yoda. Maybe when the Emperor shows up in the Rise of Skywalker, it is Baby Yoda. Where are the Navarro Mandalorians, you guys? They were there. They all teamed up in that uh, the last episode directed by Deborah Chow. Uh, the Sin, they saved our asses. We assume that they're going to be showing up at some point. Hopefully... If they're going to show up, they got to show up in the in the next episode, right? The episode leaves us with a standoff Moff Gideon on one side and his huge army. Uh, and then on the inside, we have Mandalorian, Cara Dune, and Grief Karga all there ready to do what they do best, which is wing it. We have one more episode of The Mandalorian left, and it is done. The season is done, and we have to wait probably another year for season two, which is in the works right now. They are developing season two. Um, like I said, I'm guessing it's going to be all about Baby Yoda as well. Uh, now, for some reason, they didn't get any Baby Yoda merchandise ready for the Christmas season. Christmas is coming up, and no one's getting any cool Baby Yoda stuff under the stockings this year. But to tide us over this holiday season, we do have the new Baby Yoda Life Day song that I wrote. Silver ball, silver ball, give all your money to Disney. Hey gang, are you ready to show off your sweet love for both the Orville and Star Trek? Stop by Egotastic Tees to pick up the all new Seth Trek Retro Tee today. Okay, that's it. That's all I wanted to talk about today, and I talked about it. How about you? Are you excited? Have you loved this season of The Mandalorian? Do you think that Moff Gideon is working with Snoke? Is this all just leading up to The Force Awakens? You can let me know what you think by joining the conversation below. And thank you so much for liking, sharing, and supporting my stupid show. It really does mean the world to me. I'll see you very soon. And as always, I hope all your times are egotastic fun times. Okay, now I gotta go watch The Rise of Skywalker. Wish me luck. Love you. Bye-bye. Egotastic fun time. We're gonna have a great time. Egotastic fun time. Give me all your money. Give him all your money. You will find me funny. Just give me money. I love money. Give me all your 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 money.